What's happening, guys? Hi, Facebook. It's 4.15 in Vancouver, I think. That's what my computer says. And part two, actually part three and four, but the second night of Crisis on Earth X, our big event this year, is going on. So I wanted to come say hey. Before I take some questions, um, i got to turn my heater off. It's so loud in here. One second, guys. <clears throat> It's loud here for a variety of reasons. One, we just wrapped up a scene. We're on episode 12 of Arrow. And two, uh, we're moving to another location. So a bunch of trucks are starting up. So bear with me. My bad. Um, before I get to questions, I wanted to just say that, um, that pulling something like this off uh, required um, a lot of people to make a lot of sacrifices. I mean, it's acting. It's, it's, it's still not real work. But um, some people that I would like to thank personally uh, are directors. Larry Tang. James Bamford, Dermot Downs, and Greg Smith for Supergirl, Arrow, Flash, and Legends, respectively. Um, those guys worked hard. Our second AD, Ken Chain, um, excuse me, our first AD, Ken Chain, really ran point on making sure that the shows worked hard on sharing the actors and making sure that everyone's schedule was somewhat copacetic and workable. Um, that extends to the crews, um, which had a lot of down days, but when they had to work, they had to work really, really, really hard. And, um, and then, of course, the cast, uh, principally for me, uh, that would be <clears throat> Emily, Melissa, Grant, uh, and Katie, who I spent the most amount of time with, uh, certainly along with Tom Cavanaugh, you know, us being an evil trio of Nazis. Oh, boy. Um, and then, of course, all the producers and the writers. This was... 24 acts of television, and I think that um, I think that it would be great if when all said and done, they could take out the act breaks and just put it together like a big four-hour movie, which is what it felt like to all of us. So, uh, that being said, and of course, I would like to thank Colin Donnell for making a surprise trip, and, uh, and another person who I will not reveal for lending their voice to the crossover. Um, and of course, I think that the culmination of the story and where we leave it is um, is really really cool. All right, so ask me some questions, please. I think they're going to come through. So someone heard that I had the most work to do out of anyone on the crossover, and that's that 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 was that was true. But that's because I I was you know playing two people as was um, as was Melissa, and um, I got to tell you, I really I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed playing the version of Oliver from Earth X because, you know, everyone's the hero of their own story. And I thought that if we built a really solid relationship between, um, you know, between Melissa and I, that that, you know, that'd be good. Comments don't seem to be loading. So, oh, there they are. They're just, they're just, they're just waiting on there. Okay. So Dan Galloway says, what hopes do you have for next year's crossover? Do you have any specific storylines in mind that you personally would like to tackle? P personally? <laughs> I, well, first of all, I think that it's important that, you know, hopefully everyone is lucky enough to get another season. Uh, you never want to take that for granted. And, um, you know, if we are, I feel like the way that we have scaled up the crossovers over the years, like the first year was basically just Arrow versus Flash, and a couple people went to Central City, a couple people came to Star City, uh, next year it gets a little bigger with the introduction of the legends. The next year, all of a sudden, it's it's four shows, um, and we have Melissa coming over to ours. And and then this year, I really did enjoy in the first act how they just made the Dominator seem so last year, and and just showed you the type of scale that there um, that we were looking for this year. Um, I personally think that. I don't know how we scale up more. And I mean, like, unless all the production is shut down and we, I, I don't know, just, just shoot it like you would a future film. Um, but what you could do, I think, is you could make it a little bit more of a, of a, of a character-based story. And, you know, maybe, maybe it's about, you know, one or two characters from each show, um, you know, being sequestered out somewhere. I don't know. I'm not a writer. I just say the words. And then... After the fact, I critique them, but I certainly create nothing on my own. All right. What say you here? 
Well, that's my son Xavier. Really loves the show and all the others in the crossover. And please just kindly give him a shout out. Well, it's lucky on you. Um, Emily Peckler says, "I would love to see Crisis on Earth X release as a full length movie. I think it's a great idea. Let's let's edit it all together. And let's put it on iTunes and raise some money for charity. That's always what I want to do." Um, okay. Um, big hi to Cataly Mac. Um, Crystal Burns says, my daughter is watching them right now, and she's loving it. She keeps pulling off of her headphones and giving me updates. Um, <laughs> and she was okay with the one love line as long as it only lasts this one time. Okay. Uh, Sarah Navarro says, how do you feel about the future for Oliver and Felicity now? He is uh, heavy into the idea of marriage, and she isn't. Is that going to put a wedge between them? No, I, I, think, I think they're doing... I think they're doing just fine. I mean, I think that, you know, all of it respects what she says, and as long as she feels good about it, then he feels good about it. I do like that he wants to commit to someone, though. That's really nice. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. CW Columbus. Hello from the CW Columbus, Ohio. Very, very nice. Go Buckeyes. Uh, Leon, Leonella Karina says... Was the dynamic between what's the dynamic between you and Melissa? How do you two characters being uh, married change how you enjoyed playing Oliver from Earth X? And I, I again, I just think that you know, obviously the Earth Xers are are not the um, best collection of people, but that doesn't mean that that two people can't have feelings for one another. So I really enjoyed working with Melissa. She and I hadn't had a ton to do together up until this point. I mean, aside from the uh, crossover last year, it's really interesting to see the different dynamics on shows. Like I know that our show um, is different certainly from Flash and Flash feels very different from Legends and Supergirl feels very different from all of them. And that's always a, that's always a, a, a byproduct of the person who spends the most time. I think the cast member, they set the tone. So Supergirl and working on Supergirl, it's a very, it's a very kind place. It's a very welcoming place. And Melissa really sets that tone. So, I mean, as far as the character dynamics go, you just, you just do what's on the page, but I think that uh, getting to work with her, I mentioned this on Twitter last night, was probably the, the coolest part of the crossover for me. Um, you know, the coolest scene that you've seen so far, I loved the scene with, um, with Colin Donnell uh, as Earth X Prometheus, and um, I actually remember reading that for the first time, and of course Supergirl ends, and then it starts again, and I had no idea. Colin had texted me something about the crossovers, and I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I just assumed... Um, that uh, I just assumed that it would have been Josh uh, or Adrian Chase. Um, but, uh, and, and obviously that would have been great, but I don't know if it could have uh, packed the same emotional punch. And I think that one of the fun things to do when you do a crossover like this is just take the temperature and, and try to give the fans what they want. Like the idea of Oliver and Tommy doing another scene together and maybe Oliver getting a chance to say some stuff to him that, that he never did. I mean... Where else can you do that? I love that we take the opportunity to do stuff like that. Um, hey, Stephen Amell, the DC TV University, the Arrowverse, has grown so much in such a short time. What's the one thing that you'd love to add that is currently off limits? Or something to that effect. What was the one thing that I would like to add? Um, I thought it was very <clears throat> thoughtful that they allowed us to make a Bruce Wayne reference this year. I think that having uh, having Bruce Wayne exist in the Arrowverse, um, you know, that's a really cool. He's the most, in in my opinion, he's the most iconic uh, DC character, if just not the most iconic comic book character ever. So, um, you know, that I, I have I have no illusions. He's certainly a much bigger character than Green Arrow. So, um, you know, if 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 that was something that we could do that raised the quality of our shows, especially as we get into our later years, as Greg Berlanti would say, then I'd love to be able to do that. But um, they're always they're always trying to come up with new stuff. We're always trying to come up with new dynamics right now. I think we have some cool ones going on this year on Arrow, um, especially that, that take place as we rejoin our story after after this grand grand experiment. Um, you know, but our ninth episode, well, you'll, you'll see. But, but I'm creatively feeling great. But anytime that you can add new characters, especially ones that are that iconic and dynamic, 
that's a really cool opportunity. This, by the way, has nothing to do with Crisis on Earth X, but I, I am going to do another F Cancer campaign. I'm going to launch it in January because I got very, very busy and there were a bunch of different charitable initiatives that we were undertaking and I didn't want it to get lost in the shuffle. So my apologies that it won't be in time for the holiday season, but it is happening 100%. I, I did make a promise last year at San Diego Comic Con. So there we go. Um, okay, William Pennington says, Thanks to the Arrowverse help. Why am I having trouble reading it? Because it's going so fast. It's going so fast. Okay. So as you know, tonight we are back. Part three, part four. Part three is on Flash. Part four is on Legends. Set your DVRs to both. Sit down, watch them, enjoy. I'm going to try to answer a few more questions. See, apparently we made uh, Nicola cry last night when Emily was, well, Felicity was super mean to all of her. Although she wasn't actually mean to all of her. She just said, no, it's her right. Um, all right, I'm going to wrap this up, guys. Again, 5 o'clock tonight. So excited that we had an opportunity to do this. When, when, we, when we undertake something like this um, in the moment and at the time, it does feel like an awful lot of work, and um, it does beat you down a little bit. Uh, as far as acting can possibly beat you down. But when you see the reaction that uh, it generated last night, and I read all the notes on Twitter or on Facebook, um, or I just I see the general excitement or the repeated use of the word nerdgasm, um, it makes those long hours and those um, long weeks, as the case was, um, it, it, it makes them well worth it. So again, to everyone that's involved um, and, and had a hand in making this, Thank you very much, and to everyone that's enjoying it, to, to all the people that have been with um, Arrow since 2012 or joined up because of Supergirl or Legends or have never seen an episode of Arrow because the big plans of The Flash, um, we do this for you guys, and, uh, and seeing your excitement really, really does make it all worth it. So thank you very much, everybody. Enjoy tonight, 8 p.m., 7 Central, on The CW, Crisis on Earth X. Thanks, guys. 